Welcome to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez, and it's April 27th. And this episode is the big 2-0. 2-0, -oh. or would that be that way? Anyway, um, yeah, 20 episodes in. And what we're going to do today is a, let's do a, it's going to be a drawing demo, but it's going to be um, presented as a how to draw El Muerto. Uh, my comic book characters. So for those of you who um, aren't, you know, what do you want to, you know, I'm not an artist or you're not artistically inclined naturally or, hey, even if you're a experienced pro, if you want to draw along, go right ahead. That'd be fine. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty aware of the audience, any audience, you're going to have a whole mixture of people, right? Um, I assume most of you watching are interested in the work I do and or and or comics in general art or you just want something to do during these many 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 weeks that we've all been um you know buttoned up at home uh under our uh, quarantine as we're going through this uh international pandemic so um let's take a moment to just a second here just think about all the people who've lost their lives to this uh coronavirus thing so um, and let's, uh, let's keep doing what we got to do. You know, we all got our own lives. We got to maneuver through and everything. So one of the things I do in my life is I'm a comic creator, comic book artist. I'm running this YouTube channel. So I'm going to provide something new for you today. Um, basically all you're going to need really, um, really what you're just going to basically need, like most times when you're doing drawings or comics, paper, any type of paper you want and a pencil you know um this is a mechanical pencil with a, a lead but you know just get your regular uh let's see here you know what do we call it school pencil this is unsharpened shows you how often i use these type of pencil but whatever you know um whatever you want to draw with so i'm gonna i'm gonna do mine like i usually do my drawings uh in this non-photo blue pencil in fact so yeah, what this is, it's a this is called the lead holder because it holds a lead. In this case, it's a blue, and it needs to be sharpened. Can you see that? So, you know, for years and years and years, when I was a kid, like a middle schooler, um, uptown Whittier, you've probably heard me mention. I live here in Whittier, um, so we have like this thing called Uptown Whittier, which is the for most people, they'd probably just call it the downtown section. <laughs> you know, it's like you got the main strip with the, uh, you know, most of the cool shops and such, restaurants and everything. But uh, ours is Uptown Whittier. Um, anyway, there used to be an art store there on Greenleaf Avenue. Um, I forgot the name of it. But I used to love going there, right? Because, you know, when I started becoming an artist, my middle school years particularly, you know, um, got to get my supplies, pencils, paper, pen, you know, erasers, whatever. And I'd walk around the, you know, I'd walk around the whole, every aisle, and I'd find, like, these type of, you know, which to call lead holders, but I don't know what they really were. It's like, well, so it's like a pen, but then why is there these, you know, how do you put these in, these little leads? And then I would see, like, all these little boxes of leads, but I couldn't figure out, like, I, so I didn't buy them. Um, but that, this would always intrigue me, right? Like, so then I'd, this would be next to all the mechanical pencils. And I was like, what is this? Like, okay, it's got a hole in there. It looks like a sharpener, but why does it spin? You know, it's not going to work because don't you have to have a, like a handle on it? <laughs> so, so some years ago, uh, I don't know, probably about 10 years, 15 years ago, when I first bought my, I didn't really use, I, I might have used these in college, I don't remember. Uh, but I didn't buy one. I didn't, I didn't have one for decades. So when I got one, then it's like, oh, how do you, you can't put this in a pencil sharpener, right? Um... Yeah, that, that lead will shatter because there's no wood around to protect it. But So what you do, you buy one of these and you extend the lead. So you, there's two holes in here. I guess this is, yeah, I never figured. I've only been using this one here because the lead fit in it the first time. So so what you do, you, you, you put, you, oops, sorry. So yeah, just like let out a whole bunch of the lead. And then you're going to push down on this to... You see these little, uh, the little holder things? Like, wow, it opens up. 
some of you may know this. You're like, come on, get to it, man. But not everybody knows about this, and it's like fascinating. So I pushed down on this to release the catch there. So then I pushed the pen, the pen down, and I let go of that so it locks again. So it ex it's there's a length in here that's predetermined. So that's how much lead is exposed. So then you stick it in the um, I don't know what you'd call this the pencil sharpener part. <laughs> Put it in there, and then, lo and behold, you wrote, just rotate it. And this was like a huge revelation when I actually had one of these and tried it. So I'm holding the pen holder, right? With my, you know, I'm holding this and this little part together. Maybe it spins a little bit, but anyway, you, you wrote, just rotate this. And then, it's, see how it's sharpened? Man, not the finest point, but it's okay. And then there's this, this always confused me too. Like, what's this little white uh, pad here? So you just, uh, at least what I do, I just rub the uh, tip of the lead here just to kind of clean off some of the dust and the little shavings there. See how it's a little, that stays blue? Anyway, 10 minutes later, I showed you how to sharpen uh, <laughs> these leads with these formerly mysterious, uh, do they have a name? No, it's just a company, Statler. I gotta look up the name, probably has some funky name. But anyway, um, I'm so glad to like find out, find out what this was for all these years later. Anyway, now that I've eaten up a huge chunk of my time here, um, show you how to draw a mark though. So well, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a profile shot. I'll tell you the reason why in a second. Here's an old old Marthel comic from 2004, I think. I'll talk about this in another episode. I'm, I'm gonna go through all the issues. I'm gonna draw a profile shot, uh, except it's gonna be the other way, right? So, who's that young guy there? I don't recognize him because he doesn't have a ton of white, gray hairs like I do. So that can't be me. Um, and the reason I, I decided to do this episode, um, I know plug. I can plug my own product, right? It's my channel. Gotta pay, keep the lights on. Um, my graphic novel here, uh, Days of the Dead. So. This past weekend, I signed a whole bunch of these. So what I, anyway, look, when I design a book, sometimes when I have, if it works out, like a title page, put the title up here, and then, you know, the logo, those comics, and 20th anniversary logo here from 2018. Like, ooh, I got a nice space here. So yeah, I leave, leave, leave this blank so I could do a nice El Muerto drawing for everybody who buys the book. Um, and the reason I've been doing a whole bunch of these, particularly this weekend, is... Um, this book, my graphic novel, it's being taught uh, for the last couple of years now up at uh, Modesto Junior College by a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Teresa Rojas. Um, she teaches in one of her English classes. I forgot exactly which one. Composition and critical thinking, maybe. Um, anyway, so um, the you know the library buys copies. Um, this is available through Amazon. If you go to Amazon, you can order it. Look it up, Javier Hernandez, Days of the Dead. Um, and it, yeah, it's I, I I will get paid. Don't worry. So feel free to order from there. You know, I'm not you know I put it up there. Um, you can also order from my website, which I'll put that at the end of the uh, of this episode. But what was I saying? Yeah. So she's been teaching it, and so the students can either buy the book from the bookstore. Um, because the bookstore gets, gets it through Amazon at a good, you know, a cheaper rate and then they just sell it for cover price or the students could buy old copies, right? From uh, the previous students. Or I told, uh, Dr. Rojas, well, you know, if the students want to order from me directly, like literally I will take it out of my inventory box and pack it up. Uh, I will do a drawing for them, right? And sign it and, um, mail it directly to the student. So I don't know how many, uh, you people, you know, are in college or have been in college. I guess we've all been one time or the other. But how many textbooks were you able to get from the right, the author of the textbook, the textbook, where it's signed up with a little doodle, right? I bet you your chemistry books never came uh, personalized like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> let me, uh, okay, so yeah, we're going to draw with this. So you just need a pencil and a marker maybe after, but... I'm just going to start off with my, um, you know what? I think that's, hang on. Wow, okay. 
it's uh, sticking out a lot, which that's going to break, especially with you know the way I press down, that's going to easily break. So I'm going to loosen it back here and then just uh, li lightly just push it back in the chamber. Maybe that should be maybe a tiny bit. Well, that's enough. Yeah, I, I tend to break things like with fine points like that. So anyway, let me get started. Oh my gosh, sorry about this. Um, and again, feel free to slow the video down, pause it, obviously, right? It's your, once I load this up, it's all in your hands as far as what you're gonna do. So basically, um, I'm trying to think, cause I don't know, I don't make this normally flat like that. I'm just trying to show you for, I'll just, in case you're, in case you're a beginner drawer, I just, okay, it's flat down this way, right? And we're gonna draw the, the curved top of the head. And then I'm gonna go, this is the chin, this is gonna be the chin. And then go up here, the jawline. So basically in this area, you're gonna put the ear. Don't worry about it right now, but I'm just trying like an oval egg shape just to place it. So, now the, the, the back of the skull here is gonna curve in a little bit almost to the point where the ear is at. Um, okay, so let's draw the neck. You don't wanna make it too thick, like right? It's kind of more to the, 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 the front of the neck here is more to the, by the back jawline here, more than it is towards the front of the face. Uh, yeah, see, I yeah, I'm at a certain angle here. I should probably be drawing more this way, but I don't want to put my head in the camera camera frame, so I have to fix his head a little bit, and so it doesn't slope up so much on the back. It's gonna look like alien, right? Xenomorphs. Uh, okay. And then this is, uh, yeah, not drawing the whole body on these things, just the uh, top part of the shoulders, I guess. Um, okay, so then the, yeah, round that a little bit more. Let me take a look again. Okay, I think for the purpose of this, I gotta, the jaws came down a little too far down in the front here. So here's the ear. So if you kind of just go across this way, you're gonna get to the, tip of the nose right here now I draw this a little more you know this is how I draw more simplified it's, so it's you know people don't really have pointy noses but that's how I draw my uh, characters and then the, the little bit of the uh, brow right you know I think I got the nose too high yeah see I, like I said I'm drawing it at an angle well, at least you know I didn't practice this before the episode. Although, I was going to say, I've drawn this profile. I haven't been drawing it like since day one, 1998, when I did the first book. I don't, th I don't think I necessarily drew this all the time. But I have, like, I know probably within the last, I I'm guessing 10 years, I've kind of used it as a, you know, signature drawing, um, either in, you know, like this book or just other books or sometimes you want me to sign their sketchbook or you know or back of a postcard it's just a nice you know i figure something nice to give somebody like just uh not just if they ask for they ask for your autograph fine i'll give them that but uh just a quick little sketch of the character i think that's a nice uh extra thing i mean i know i would like that if i went up to a comic book creator i like you know that i really admired and um i got a sketch of the character for free okay the eye you know it's like uh Slice of pizza, right? So I tell my students, you don't see it's, you don't see the whole eyeball because it's obviously the skin covering, you know, and the eyeball is stuck in the socket of the skull. But anyway, this is meant to be a real simple lesson um, for the mouth. So the mouth is a line. Don't make it too long because it will look odd, it's like the Joker. They they cut through his cheeks. So what helps me determine how long that is because I know he's gonna have. Right, El Muerto has these four little lines. People think they're stitches, or some people did in the old days. Like, why is his mouth stitched? Like, no, no, they're, you know, they're drawn black little lines here to represent teeth, like a skull. Duh. <laughs> so he, he's got four, so if it's a profile, he's going to have two. So I 
put one here and one about there. Notice I switched from the blue line pencil to just regular pencil. Okay, that's all right. Now the ear, we already have, we already kind of placed it right with that oval. So, you know, when I, te when I, te I teach a comic book and cartooning classes a lot, sometimes when I'm drawing the ear, I go, well, just think of a potato chip, how it's, you know, it's not an oval. It's got a little bit of a, some curve on it and kind of dips in here and curves up here. And you know what I mean? It's, um, yeah, pizza, uh, pizza ear. Yeah, like a lot of food metaphor here. So, okay. We got the eye, and then like I just draw a little bit of an indi eyebrow indication. So remember, this is car this is comic book art, cartooning, which is different than doing, um, you know, like a realistic portraiture, life drawing. Um, you have a lot more detail in it, and you'd want to go for a lot more accuracy as to what a human head looks like. But we're cartooning here. Um, okay, at this point, yeah, pretty much this is the order I kind of do it in, like the outline. The eyes, um, mouth, the ears. So now I can do his hairline. Like most people, it's you know, it's mostly gonna kind of be like this. Right, it curves up this way. If you ever look at someone when they cut their hair really short, you can really see this uh, curve here. It's kind of bald right there, right? Like hey, <laughs> but his hair, you know, like most people, it would come to a a peak somewhere here at the top. Near the you don't want to slope it down too far down the forehead, right? So, but he's got that famous um, hair part in the middle. So, this is the side view. So, you draw one one big wave. So it goes up. It's almost like you're following a strand of hair. It goes up and then it comes down, and. And then I draw, usually draw at least another visible one there. And then the rest you just assume gets lost in all the other, the black hair. Now what I, what I do is a little stylistic touch. So on the other side of his head, right, it would be the same thing, that, that big part going that way. But what I do, and I've been doing it for years, again, there's no real reason for it. Um, but other than I just like putting a little, a little flourish of like a strand, you know, just, strands of hair coming forward like you may not necessarily see it like in a real person if they had that haircut um but maybe you would a little bit but anyway it's cartooning right it's a stylistic choice you make uh he's got long sideburns so and i just like throw little lines across all the way up this will blend in once i color it right once i blacken it in don't worry about why what's this here what's that um the hair waves to the back um, you know, the hairline in the back is, you know, it's trimmed here. And what I like to do is uh, comb it back. I feel like a hairstylist. And then I put a couple of little, what do you call them? Are these cow, cow licks? Little strands of hair kind of sticking back that way. Again, it's just a stylistic thing I do. Um, actually, if, I don't have it with me, but... No, oh, boy, it's, a, it's not a tangent. It sounds like one. So you remember Batman, the animated series from the, what, the early 90s, 92? Great series. Um, but so they, they had a great line of action figures. Um, and I remember the Robin, you know, Batman, right? His sidekick Robin. The Robin action figure, you know, it was painted, right? The the hair on, on the character. So it was, you know, he had a close cropped hair here, here on the back of the head. And then it would kind of go up in this, um, I think it went higher up. It just had, it just had this really cool little f stylish, like flourish like that, right? So that that stuck with me for whatever reason when I, you know, when I started doing this to my drawings of the character. So it's kind of like, this is cut really crop close and then these little uh, cowlicks. Boy, you didn't expect that much uh, detail about a character's hair, did you, from, a, uh, from the creator of the character? <laughs> Um, okay, what else? Oh, I forgot. Right, he's got the um, little cross logo there on his forehead, like you'd see in a lot of the Day of the Dead sugar skulls. So you just draw in half the cross because it's on this profile. So the you know the top bar, the top uh, vertical bar is probably thinner because you don't see the whole thing, and then the uh, cross bar would be. Probably like the same. They're probably like the same thickness here, right? Anyway, uh, okay, there we go. 
and let's see. I'm going to uh, put the the neckline of the t-shirt here. He's wearing the t-shirt, and he's got his uh, black mariachi jacket over that. So just swoop this line up this way, and you can just make a quick indication of his the top of his arm, right? Which because it's a suit, it's kind of uh, comes to a point here, right? And then you know here's his t-shirt. And then it's the side profile of him, so, you know, oops, excuse me, right? He's got these uh, little wavy lines here on the front of the jacket. So we're drawing it from the side. And I really stylize this. I mean, what I do here, basically make the lines wavy here and then go up the other way. And then the uh, little, that little corner part there. Well, basically, look, the, the pencil's done. So I'm going to, um, let me ink it. So what, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use my, let me grab the red color here. All right, so give me a second to uh, look at it more evenly here. All right. Yeah, it still, it actually slopes a little at an angle. I'm looking at that, but this is uh, just for demonstration. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, oh, you know what I do actually. So I know I told you that, um, well, I told you you only need a pencil, right? Okay, so I'm not going to deviate too much. But for the purpose of showing you on camera, the black will help you see it better. So I'm going to, um, besides, you can always go uh, stop the video, run out to the store if they're open, <laughs> and buy a black marker. So I'm going to go, you know, go over my pencil work with marker. So it's a nice bolder image this way. And um, and the eye, a little indication of eyelashes. This pen's pretty thick, so. So remember, El Muerto's eyeballs are black. So the little white you see in his eye, it's kind of reversed of ours. Like the the little white would be the pupil. So there's always a little white um, in his eye, but it's a black eyeball. He's dead, right? Don't be shocked. And then his eyebrow, and then I'm drawing the little cross here on the front of his forehead. And of course the mouth. Again, a real simplified line work here. The teeth get the these teeth marks can be a little thicker to really make them stand out. Um okay, I'm gonna do the neck. And let's do the front of the shirt. And then the jacket and the top line of the t-shirt, neckline. Um, again, it doesn't matter the order you, you know, there's no like, well, you got to draw the face and then go to the hair in the back. It's whatever you want to do, really. As long as you get it done, everything's always got to get done, right? So it's, um, so it's complete if you want a completed drawing or image or whatever you're doing. And here we go with the sideburns and then the, uh, the hair there. And let's see the hair back here and then like these little... And I'm not particular, it doesn't have to be three. Sometimes I do two or maybe even one, but I did three here. Um, okay, yeah, let me turn this upside down for you. There we go. So now I'm gonna draw in his hair. And I don't wanna just make it just like, I don't wanna just get all this and color it solid black. I wanna give a little sheen, little highlights. Yes, he uses some good hair products, hair care products. Um, so I'm just gonna, make these little lines and they kind of end at different points here, right? And then I'm gonna draw here in, the, in this section, I'm gonna draw some more lines. See, by just making a bunch of lines in succession and they, and they don't end in the same spot here, you start creating this this kind of like a sheen, right? To the hair, like the white, that white in between there's kind of like the shimmering highlights. When you look at people with dark hair, black hair, it's not like pure 100% black throughout. There's You see all kinds of shades of gray and black and you know, if there's light hitting it, you can see in those highlights. Um, so around the ear, I do make it solid black. It's, yeah, kind of makes, it helps the ear pop out, stand out, right? Because it's just a black and white drawing. 
And then I'll, again, we'll go back to our uh, throwing some highlights here and there. So you know these um, these slashing lines here. There's it's not like I draw them the same exact spot each time. It's just random, right? Like don't ever get caught up with like he's got the exact same you know white highlight going like here. Let's turn it back this way so we can all look at it. Um, yeah, the, I like the gray pencil in between. It's like little strands of hair kind of adds to it. But uh, there we go. Um, here we go. The, the jacket. Let me. Um, Remember, he's got an all black jacket, so I'm gonna fill in the black part of it here. And then I wanna go up here and do the wavy lines here. Now, the, really quick, I'm gonna get this dark black marker and draw the arm, the top of the arm. And I'm gonna continue all the solid black on the front part of the jacket. I'm going to leave a little white highlight there, right? With some jagged lines here. And then, um, because I don't want the arm to get lost against the black jacket, I'm going to leave a little sliver of white in between. Watch, check this out. And maybe one in the middle, because like, there'd be a seam maybe on the jacket. Check this out. Maybe it doesn't make sense now, but so I'm not gonna fill in that black. And if you want to leave, you know, you can leave a little uh, right here, like on this side, these little slashing lines going into it. And then um, now I'm gonna do this side, and I'm, this will be solid. So you see, it's just like uh, So now it's a little bit of a separate, this little white highlight gives a separation between the arm and the front of the jacket. Um, what else do we got? Fix the little add to the nose here, a little thicker. And I think, I think that's it. I mean, it's just a quick, simple drawing. Uh, let's see here. These markers dry pretty quick. He says on camera as he smears the ink. No. No, it looks like it, I'm going to take out these little white, these little uh, pencil marks here in the highlights just for, uh, and the pencil marks around the, uh, around the head here. Take a look at that. Okay. Uh. No, okay, this is, I'm gonna cheat. Is this cheating, but I want to um, show a little more of this, the, the top of the ear here. I'm gonna go over it again with black, but the, but the jawline I drew was running into the ear too much. So I'm gonna, I'll go, when this dries, I'm gonna go over it with black. So now you see the top curve of the ear there. A little better and I think that's uh, that's that's so that's the basic drawing I do in the in, you know when I do a quick El Muerto sketch you know it's funny so I, like I've been doing that this particular sketch for some years now um, so I, I'm curious how many I don't know how many I've done uh, we have to assume not thousands no way it's thousands because I, I haven't been doing it for 22 years um, but probably a couple hundred, right? You know, when you... Because I, I haven't done it just in the graphic novel, but just like I said, I'll do it on other things, posters or whatever, prints. Sometimes they just give me a piece of paper. Hey, can you sign this? And if there's time, you know, as long as there are not like, you know, 50 people waiting. Um, but I do these really quick. I mean, I, I took it... I did it way slower right now because I was trying to walk you guys through it. Um, let's see. That may not be 100% dry. But it's okay, just for the purpose. I just want to show you when you use that. We say white out, but technically, yeah, this is, well, the jumbo correction pen. Um, Multi-purpose. Anyway, I am going to 
fix this line a bit. And then what I wanted to do is smooth out this. Uh, yeah, it's not dry. All right. Well, I'm sorry. But you can get an idea, right? If it was dry, then this black line would have created a really smooth line around the ear. Again, just being a little picky there, but wanted it to uh, kind of shine. And then, of course, um, we sign it. So use a thinner pen for this one. Even the signature, I... Uh, my earliest signatures are different. Um, so I, I like this one. It's got, I don't know, it's almost like an old school cartoony, a cartoonist scrawl to it. And then the other things too, when I used to sign things in the beginning for several years, it was just like my regular signature, like you'd see on my you know, driver's license or you know when I sign a check or something. And then, so two things were like, well, on the one hand, I don't want, you know, I don't like the idea of just my signature. I mean, nowadays people can steal your identity online, I guess, easily. Or, But back then I was like, I don't want that signature out there on everything, right? It should only be used for official documents, basically. So I wanted a kind of different signature for that. And then I'll, I did want something really, you know, I, like I said, look at old school cartoonists. Sometimes it's like a big, bold name. So that's what I wanted to do, too. Um, but I don't draw a fancy box around there or all these other designs around it like some people do um the name's good enough and i always put the usually the abbreviated date so that's 19 that's 2020 not 1920 maybe in 500 years when people are going through all this stuff they will have no idea what uh century they're talking about right but um yeah as if we'll all as as if all this stuff will last that long hey we just got to get through these a uh, couple of months right i shouldn't be thinking about a century <laughs> But there we go. There is our El Muerto drawing. Um, so a bunch of students in, up in the Modesto area, Turlock, the neighboring cities, they're gonna be opening their graphic novel and they're gonna see that drawing. Only thing different on theirs is I do color it. I have been coloring these. Um, let me see. Do you, want me, do you want me to see me color this? It's not a good idea because it's, this isn't all dry and sometimes this black isn't dry and it but we'll just see. I know the ear's going to be a problem because it's white out here, right? But, um, again, this is just for fun. Just to give you, just to bring you in to check out my process. What I'm doing here late at night. Usually late at night in the studio. Um, yeah, see, it's, it's getting a little dirty, but... What what's okay, what's what works fine though if it bleeds and such is the grays, the gray and the black. So uh, yeah, Let's add a little highlight here on the shirt, the t-shirt. I kind of like the way it smears and you get that, you get like another a third color instead of just the one that's in the ink, in you know instead of just the color that's in the pen because it's blending with the black. Um, then some darker gray here. And we shouldn't lose too much of that little highlight line. Yeah, it's like surgeon with the scalpel. You gotta be really fine with it. But you still see the little white highlight. But now you're getting like this extra gray in here, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, like a lot of the drawings of El Muerto, you're not gonna see it on, did I show you this comic yet? Yeah, I did. There's a blue. It's like almost like a purple, right? You see in his hair? And, uh, th yeah, there's some blue in there. You know, that all dates back to, uh, as far as I know, Superman. They used to put blue at some point in Superman's long history in his hair. Because, right, Superman has black hair. Um, but that blue, you know, as a, as a, as a youngster and get older and such, it's always... And you'd see it in other characters, and it's like, you just start like, oh, okay, it's a, it's not that the guy has blue hair, but it's always, I always, I always liked it as a highlight. Just adds a little more, uh, well, it's very comic book, a little more comic book uh, flair to the, uh, the character there. And, uh, yeah, I need that light gray again. hope this is the real light one. 
plug it, the secret is out. This is where I check all the pins. Um, I'm gonna add some little shadowing there under above his eye, side of his nose, his lower lip, and then some shadow there from the uh, the hair coming down the side here. And add some under the chin, under the neck here. Yeah, the ears, it looks funky there because, again, we didn't take the time to dry it. So it's all, I'm not blaming you guys, but it is your fault. I got to get this done. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, you know what? This is just a one for the practice books. Man, see, it's getting all kind of messing up there. It's getting too dark, but... Hey, like I tell my students, right? I'd be a hypocrite. Hey, guys, it's okay. Mistakes are okay. We're not here to be perfect. Um, you know, let's just cope with it. Well, there we go. We've drawn El Muerto. Well, I've drawn it, but hopefully you've drawn it. And um, how am I going to... Why don't you share it? Why don't you... If you guys are probably following me on my Instagram account, um, tag me, right? It's uh, an Instagram. It's uh, Javier Los Comics. Which I think you guys know it by now, but which one is Instagram? Here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if that's coming up, but Instagram, Javier Los Comics, one word. Or if you follow me on Facebook or, or hell, email to me, whatever. But yeah, if you uh, drew along, take a picture of it and uh, post it on your account and share it with me. it will be cool to check him out. Um, so then, yeah, that's it. So this was a how to draw El Muerto uh, tutorial slash drawing demo. Um, but thanks so much for tuning in once again. I always appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next episode of Los Comics TV. Okay? Bye. Thanks.